Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. So do you want to find out about some really cool plants? These are going to be the plants that I've got on my current wish list. I know a lot of people have been asking what it is I might be looking to add to my collection, so I thought I would share. Now there is quite a few plants on this list and I'll have a picture for most of the plants whilst I'm talking to them. I will try to link everybody's whose picture it is because obviously I don't have pictures or videos of these plants because they are not mine. So all the image rights go to the people who I will be linking down below in the description. But essentially each one of these plants is unique to me at least and they have something that I find quite interesting about them. I will split them up into categories and I'll see if I can put chapters at the bottom of this video so you can skip to a category section basically. So I will have some philodendrons, I'll have some anthuriums, I'll have some monsteras, I'll have some hoyas and I'll also have a random section basically which is plants that don't fit into any one of those categories. But yeah, without further ado, let's dive into it. So starting off strong with this one, and this is a plant that I've had on my wish list for a very long time now, I think probably coming up to three or four years. And this is the Philodendron Dean McDowell, and it's got very large heart-shaped pillowy leaves if I'm not mistaken, it has got a cross, I think it might be a cross of the Pastazanum and the Gloriosum. I do have the Pastazanum and I will at some point be doing a review video. Bit of a spoiler alert, it ain't going to be a good review. Um, because that plant has quite a few issues. I know from a lot of people that do have the Pastazanum though that I don't think it's as issue prone. I might have been a bit unfortunate in the Pastazanum that I have has had issues and other people don't. Do let me know down below in the comments if you've got the Pastazanum and you've got no problem with it. <laughs> My one's had problems, just to say the least, basically. But the, and ironically enough, I only got my Philodendron Pastazanum because I wanted to find the Dean McDowell and I couldn't find it. It was really expensive when I did find it in the UK. I think it's become a bit more available at the moment. The prices definitely have come down now. I know there was some debate about whether or not it is a Dean McDowell or whether or not it's Pastazanum, and there's certain differences that you need to be looking at on the plant. But yeah, first plant on my list is possibly one of the ones that I'm looking for the most, the Philodendron Dean McDowell. The next one on the list might surprise a few people, and this is the Philodendron Holtonianum. I'm going to butcher the names of most of these plants, so I do apologize in advance, but I'll pronounce them the way that I think I can pronounce them from reading them because that's usually the only way that I've kind of seen these plant names. The Holtonianum, if I'm not mistaken, has got a kind of a bit of a nickname and a bit of a name that everybody uses, I think jokingly for this plant, and it's called the Tesla plant. And depending on the image that I will find to put here, you should be able to see why it's called the Tesla plant. I don't think this is a plant that grows relatively compact. It is, can be kind of a bit of a wide plant. So I forgot to mention with the Dean McDowell, if I'm not mistaken, it is a crawler like the Pastazanum, like the Gloriosum and all of these things. So no problem whatsoever. The Holtonianum is a plant that I would like to get, whether or not I'm actually going to ever get it, purely because I don't have the space, I don't know, but the leaves of this plant are always going to be the most unique thing about it. That kind of tea with a bit of a point at the very bottom, I would love to add this to my collection. Interestingly enough, this is the one plant that I've seen a lot of people who did want it, did get it in their collections, and do get bored of it relatively quickly. So on my wish list, but kind of if I get it and I'm in the right frame of mind and it's the right price I might give it a try but it's not one that I'm in desperate need to find out but one that I would like to add potentially to the collection. The next one on the list is the Philodendron Goldii I would assume that's pronounced. I think this has also moved over to a different genera now so this is a Thermatophyllum. This is interesting because one of 
my kind of OG followers on Instagram. And if you're not following me on Instagram, please do consider following me there. We can have loads of chats there a bit easier than we can on YouTube because I'm not on the comments on YouTube all the time. But yeah, one of my followers on there is has had got this plant and we were having chats back and forth and he's just like, is this or is this this? I'm just like, oh wow, that's the plant that I've wanted for a very long period of time. And the reason why I like this plant, and you should be able to see from the picture hopefully, is that it kind of grows on one stem. It might even be a petiole. It then has kind of a ring around it and it then has individual leaves that come off that kind of secondary petiole, I guess. Now, I had found one that I thought was a plant because I didn't even know what plant this was until very recently to realize that it was a philodendron. There was um, another plant that I did get, which was, I'm trying to remember now, it was, it was a plant that was in the Amorphophallus family, so the corpse plant, essentially. And it does have, um, and I'll see if I can add the, the name at the top. I'm if I'm not mistaken, the common name is voodoo lily, but I think there's a few things that are called voodoo lilies. But I'll see if I can put the scientific name at the top as well. And it does have a flower that does stink, but it does have a similar kind of growth pattern. But the one that I had originally seen and the one that really did grab my attention was this philodendron goldii or thematophyllum goldii. And hopefully you might be able to see from the picture why it is very unusual. I don't even know if that is a stem, if that's a petiole, because I think with the corpse flower that I'm talking about, that whole thing is one leaf, basically. So it might be the same with the philodendron. If I can find any of that information in the research, I will add it somewhere on the screen to confirm. If not, assume that it isn't, basically. Now this philodendron, the philodendron stenolobum, is one that I saw come up on occasion on my Instagram feed from people. It doesn't look quite as impressive in the more juvenile form, but certain individuals that have had this for many, many years and they've managed to, to get basically a huge plant, it is striking. It is, <laughs> it's a wow plant for sure. With the leaves coming off the main kind of central point, it does grow very wide and it can grow very tall as well. I've also seen some pictures online where this is climbing up walls and up trees, which with most philodendrons being that they're epiphytic, that would be the normal way that they would be growing. But the leaves are very cool and it is very much an imposing plant. Again, a kind of wish, pl wish list plant that I would love to add to my collection. I most definitely don't have the space for it here. If I do eventually move to a bigger house and I have a much bigger conservatory or greenhouse or a skylight and I've got a huge ceiling, then definitely going to be one that I would want to add. I would be remiss about not having it on here because this is very much for me a true worthy plant. And wrapping up the philodendron section, I don't think this is going to come to surprise to anybody. And I think most people that have got plant collections, the ultimate unicorn plant, which would be the philodendron spiritus sancti, <laughs> and all that that might mean in terms of cost, rarity, difficult to grow, difficult to find generally. Just, yeah, I mean, I don't think an awful lot of people who have got collections and they've got loads of philodendrons would pass this up if it was within their price range. Let's put it that way. <laughs> this is most definitely not in my price range. I am not about to spend silly money. And again, I will caveat this like I do with my review videos, depending on when you look at this video, because a lot of plants that were ridiculously expensive, one that is coming up on the list, that used to be ridiculously expensive at some point do become a bit more commonplace so the price does drop. But at the moment, the prices for the Spiritus Sancti are still ridiculous. I do know, however, and I don't know how accurate this is, that there are certain places in South America where this is nowhere near as rare as it might be in other places, but it's very difficult to get those plants out of the country. That's all I'm going to say. But yeah, that surprised me when I found out about that. But yeah, the Spiritus Sancti, obviously, and it goes without saying, I think it's red leaf exotics that have bought a variegated or they managed to get a variegated sport of this. Obviously, yes to that as well. Ah. 
Moving on to anthuriums, and the first anthurium is a bit of an ode to the plant behind me, which is my philodendron esmeraldens. And by ode, I mean it's kind of one of those ones that I didn't know existed, and now that I do, I'm just like, oh, I need the set. I need both of them, basically. Because I kept seeing a lot of people mentioning the anthurium esmeraldens, and I didn't give it a second thought, and just kind of thought, and again, this is very, very arrogant on my part, and I do apologize for even thinking this, but I was just like, oh, they've probably got that wrong. They just mean the philodendron is Merrill Dense, not the anthurium is Merrill Dense. However, <laughs> I did take a moment and check myself, but I also went and checked online, and there is an anthurium as Merrill Dense, and it's very similar in terms of the ruffling on the leaves, and I know why would I want another plant that's very similar looking, but come on, if I've got the philodendron as Merrill Dense, I really should have the Anthurium as Merrill Dense. And I don't think it's particularly difficult to find. I don't think it's the easiest thing to find either, but definitely one that I will be hunting very considerably to see if I can find it and add it to the collection, essentially. The other Anthurium on this list is the Anthurium Pedatoradiatum, and I think that's the Fingers Anthurium, purely because it's just unique looking. It looks like no other anthurium generally. I think there's a few that, that do have that kind of fingery look. But I quite like it. It's very... I've got a very vivid imagination and it's kind of looking like a bit of a creepy hand essentially. Very much one that I would like to add to the collection. I have a very sneaky suspicion that it's also not particularly difficult to keep happy. Or it is very difficult to keep happy and it's now kind of eluding my memory. I think it's a relatively easy one to keep happy. If you do have it, I am so jealous, but also do let us know if it's an easy anthurium to care for, essentially. And wrapping up the anthurium section would be the anthurium wenderlingii? Wenderlingii? I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. I'm also looking down because I've got a list, basically, that I'm going through. But I will put the name at the top. And I'll put an image, and you might be able to say, well, you've got a strappy lith anthurium anyway, why would you want another one? And I'm just like, yes, it is. It's got a slight difference in the leaf. I think there's a bit of a wave that can sometimes happen on the very, very long leaves. However, and I will now insert a second picture of what its inflorescence looks like. And just, wow, I am a sucker for weird looking plants or blooms. And the fact that the inflorescence is a bit of a corkscrew kind of pig's tail thing, uh -oh. I didn't need to know anymore. I'm just like, yes, this please. Very difficult to find from what I know, very expensive as well, so probably one that won't be getting added to my collection anytime soon, but very much deserves a place in my wish list. Moving on to Hoyas. And the first Hoya, and I think most of these Hoyas might surprise people because a lot of people go for the slightly rarer Hoyas that are very silvery and very splashy. I never got the hype personally for all the silvery Hoyas. At some point, if I do find one that comes across me and I like the look of it and it's not ridiculously priced, I might consider adding one in. And I do have the Eskimo, the Croniana Eskimo, which I think is meant to be relatively silvery. Uh, uh, it's okay. I'm just like, I don't know. I do have a few silvery plants, but I don't kind of gravitate towards them, which is ironic because if most of my friends will know is anything that sparkles or shines with me. I'm just like, ooh, magpie. But uh, yeah, so most of these Hoyas are actually quite plain looking or kind of green essentially. So, but I'm very much one of those people that likes Hoyas, not just for their foliage, but also because a lot of my Hoyas are now at the age where they're blooming all the time through most of the summer and it's glorious. Most of the house are different sections of the house that have got Hoyas that smell amazing. So most of these is for the blooms and for the scent. So the first one, and I don't think this is a particularly difficult one to find, is the Hoya lacunosa. I think it's sometimes also called the cinnamon Hoya, and the plant isn't particularly exciting, the blooms aren't particularly exciting, however I would love a Hoya that does smell like cinnamon. Again, bizarre, because for somebody who comes from Greece and there's a lot of cinnamon in Greek cooking generally, 
I don't like things that have cinnamon flavor just for the sake of having cinnamon flavor. So cinnamon gum to me is just a hard no, basically. If a food has some cinnamon and it's one of the flavor notes, then great, that's fine. I'm also a bit of a foodie. Uh, but yeah, a plant that does have blooms that smell like cinnamon, I think would be quite an interesting one. I don't mind the smell of cinnamon. The next one is Hoya Pachyclada. And again, it's kind of, the, the name kind of harkens to probably some ancient Greeks. So Bahi generally means fat or kind of big. Uh, so Pachyclada and looking at the picture, there's relatively big succulent kind of chunky leaves. The, the blooms can be quite pretty as well. I think it's just a floral scent when it does bloom. But I do like it because the leaves are kind of fat and chubby and it's kind of cute, basically. It's something a bit different, essentially. This Hoya, however, is a Hoya that I do like for its foliage. So the Hoya Bertonii, I think. And it's got fuzzy, chubby little leaves. And I think it's great. And it's got a bit of darkness around the leaf margin as well. Just... Anybody who's been here for a while knows that I do like really kind of tactile, fuzzy or hairy plants. I'm weird. But <laughs> but uh, this I think would be great. And again, I don't think most of the Hoyas in this list are actually particularly difficult or expensive to find. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to find, especially in the UK. Uh, they're definitely not readily available in most stores. But yeah, definitely one that I would love to add. Just that, just that fuzziness. It just feels a bit like it could be like a bit of a teddy bear. This one, however, is one that I do like for its bloom. So this is a Hoya Pachyflora, a Pachyflora. And the thing that distinguishes this specific Hoya from many other Hoyas is that on the peduncle, where you usually get umbels of leaves, so multiple leaves on that one peduncle, this one just has the one bloom. It's considerably larger and it's from what I can see from pictures, it's kind of white and kind of almost a bit of a bit like a bit of a bowl or a bucket kind of shape. It does have a kind of relatively floral scent. I don't think it smells like anything kind of recognizable as something else, like the one that I was mentioning earlier on that does have a cinnamon scent. But the bloom on this is kind of interesting, and I would love to see if I could come across this. This is one that I don't see very often at all. So this would be one that I would love to find and add to the collection at some point. And wrapping up with the Hoyas is the Hoya odorata. And as the name might suggest, it is a very, very fragrant Hoya. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a Hoya that generally will bloom quite freely and quite regularly. I might be wrong. It might be one of the other ones on this list, but definitely one that I would like to find mainly because of that kind of uh, I think, again, it's just a floral scent, but that kind of floral scent, because I have come to the point now where I quite like most of my Hoya flowers scent. <laughs> I think the one that's a bit funky and a bit off is the Oberwarte or the Kerii. I don't know because I've got them sitting next to each other in a room, and every time I pass by the room, those two usually bloom around the same time, and they bloom heavily as well. It does smell floral, but it smells a bit funky. So I'm really hoping that this might not be the same. This is just a, a pleasant floral scent, especially if it gets loads of blooms. But yeah, definitely one that I would like to add to my collection. Moving on to Monstera. And the Monstera, there's only a couple here. And the first one is one that I have been looking at for a very long time, ever since before it changed name. So this would have been the Monstera Epipremnoides, and now is the Monstera Esqueleto. Oh, this is one that has become a bit more readily available since I started really kind of lusting after it three years ago but uh, it still can be relatively expensive. You don't tend to get particularly large leaves unless you import from the Far East, but beautiful plant. I've always liked the leaf structure of the Adansonii and the fact that this is like an Adansonii on steroids. Just wow. I mean, uh, this is a plant that I do know can get quite large and kind of in charge and kind of wide again. I will make space for this plant. 
But yeah, hopefully soon, one day soon, I might add an Esqueleto to my collection. I would like one that isn't particularly juvenile. I'd like to get a bit of a head start with that one, similar to what I had. I don't need it to be fully mature, like huge, huge leaves, but I would like relatively large leaves on this to then uh, just be able to grow it. Ah, uh, the Esqueleto just really, really speaks to me. And the second and last one on the Monstera, as I said, only a couple on the Monstera list. Again, similar to the Spirit of Sancti, the unicorn, which probably isn't that much of a unicorn anymore for Monsteras, is the Monstera Oblique Peru. I do have uh, the Columbus or Columbia version of the Oblique, and it's nice. It hasn't started to fenestrate in any way or form, so it's just solid green leaves at the moment. It's getting there slowly. But uh, yeah, oh no, I think it might be the Amazonas that I've got. I'll correct myself somewhere up there. I'll find it for my plant care app, basically. But the Monstera Oblique Peru, and yes, it's never an it's never an Oblique. It's usually an Adansonia, but wow. And it has become a lot more readily available. I mean, even just before filming this video, I saw a couple of them come up in cost, and it was between 100 to 150 Great British Pounds for like a a stem with a leaf or two on it basically so yeah but I definitely would still ever since this first kind of came to my attention probably three or four years ago I have wanted one and eventually I will add one to my collection. So moving on to the Epipremnum section and again there's only a couple on the Epipremnum one which I've mentioned recently on a previous video is the Epipremnum Skeleton Key. <laughs> wow. I had heard of the Skeleton Key before it kind of became much, much bigger. I think it was on a different YouTube channel, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Legends of Monstera. And he got a plant in the mail who would basically turn to motion. It was very tricky to kind of um, transport it and it came from the Far East. I think if it's closer shipping, they don't have that much of an issue. But just... The the leaf shape on this is where it's all at. You can get them a bit more these days, at least here in the UK. If you search, you will find one. They're not they're not cheap, cheap, but they're not particularly expensive either for what they are. They are just very, very juvenile, and they just look like a very standard green pothos leaf, or uh, almost like an Epipremnum penatum leaf, essentially. You do need them to get a bit bigger so they can start fenestrating. So it is good if you can get a slightly more mature specimen to kind of go from there. But yeah, if I can get one that's a slightly more mature leaf and I can grow the skeleton key the way that it's meant to look, basically, with its... I, I want to say fenestration, but it looks like half the leaf has pretty much been chewed off by some form of animal. And it does really look like something that could be a key. Ah, oh, amazing. I just love weird... Uh, plants or like leaf shapes as well, not just blooms and things like that, but oh, this one I would love to add to my collection. And the second one and last one on the Epipremnum kind of list essentially is one that I've already got, but I've got the green form and I am kicking myself for never getting the silver form. The silver form is readily available. I could probably get this, I just haven't got round to it. It's the Epipremnum and Plissium Silver Stripe or Silver. And it's just got some silveriness on the leaves. This is coming after the bit that I was talking that I'm not a huge fan of silvery leaves necessarily. But again, it's one of those things that I want to have the set. I want to have the green form and I would like to have the silver form, mainly because I've really quite enjoyed growing the green form. And it's also an epipremnum that not a lot of people are aware of necessarily. And wrapping up with the random selection of plants, and these are ones that don't feel ni fit nicely into any of the previous categories. So the first one is the Libicia turtleback. And it's looking at the leaves, you can kind of understand where the turtle aspect of this comes through. This is a plant that's got very interesting marking and kind of ridges on the leaf. And it does look very much like an actual kind of turtle shell. And as a kid that grew up with both turtles and tortoises, I always get those two like muddled up. Uh, but I had both, essentially, I had both land and and fresh water. Um, I would love to get this, this, just the look of this. I do have a very sneaky suspicion that this is not a particularly easy plant to keep happy, and I think it does kind of need a terrarium. 
That doesn't always worry me or stress me out too much because I'm growing in a conservatory, so the conditions are generally quite humid in here for most of the year. So should be able to like plants that are meant to be in kind of terrariums. I've grown relatively okay in the conservatory without throwing too much of a hissy fit. But yeah, this one is one. Not one that you see come up very often. I don't think it's. Be I think it's mainly because maybe that not that many people know about it or search for it or want to necessarily buy it. But definitely one that if I do find it and the price is right, I will be picking one up. The next one on the list is one that I spoke about with Jane Perone on the episode that we did together on her podcast, and I will link it down below. And this is the Geogenanthus Midnight if I'm not mistaken, and it's got the very, very round leaves. I think they are sometimes shortened down to geos, and this is a plant that's kind of up and coming and trendy, and we talked about this with Jane on the podcast, that <laughs> these plants have been around since the 70s. They're just resurfacing now. They're coming back in trend, essentially. But very, very cool dark leaves. Sometimes I don't think this, the midnight one, is the one that has the pink stripe or the purple stripe. I might be wrong. I will correct myself if I am but a very, very different and unusual plant. And I do like these kind of disc-shaped leaves, and I've had most things that are disc-shaped leaves. And it's like the the peperomioides, the peperomia, the raindrop peperomia. So anything with kind of round leaves, I'm a bit of a sucker. And if it's got dark leaves as well, yes, I will be taking one of those. So yeah, I think this is another one that's not particularly easy to keep happy for most people. And by the way, any of these comments that I'm making, if you have got these plants and you find that they're easy, please do share down below if they are easy and what you do in order to be sure that they're easy plants. Because if I do get them, I will definitely be coming back to the comments of this video and checking on that. Thanks. <laughs> and finishing up, this might be an interesting one that people might have not expected. This is an epiphyllum. Epiphyllum. And it's the Epiphyllum oxypetalum, and I think this is Princess of the Night. Princess of the Night, and it is a tropical, essentially, cactus. And it's, I think it looks quite similar to another tropical cactus that I have, which is the Fernleaf cactus. And I will be doing a review on that one at some point in the future soon. But this is very, very cool. and I. I'd kind of seen it on and off, and the, the cactus itself is quite beautiful, but the, the, the kind of the show-stopping element of this is when it blooms. And there's a few things that I've been able to find out about this plant. It doesn't bloom very often. It doesn't bloom for very long, so it will literally bloom for an evening, and it's kind of blink and you've missed it. And this came to my attention for the first time properly. I had seen it. I hadn't realized, but I had seen this growing up back home my great aunt, I think, had this plant, and it did bloom for her regularly, actually, because it was a very, very old plant. I think it was probably at least a 10 to 15 year old plant, and she had it, uh, and it was beautiful. But uh, I saw this for the first time again, and it refreshed my memory on uh, Crazy Rich Asians. And there's a very famous scene when there's a big party, and everybody goes just to watch these blooms open up. And you can kind of see where the the name, the Princess of the Nights, come from because it does bloom at night and it's gone. And then you might be waiting a year or a few years to get another bloom. So it's a bit of a big deal moment, essentially. But yeah, that's it in terms of my wish list. I know a lot of people have been asking this for a while. There's probably more plants on there that are not in the list that I've just given you now. I'm very aware of the time and this is already a relatively long video. But uh, yeah. Tell me if any of these are in your wish list, or if they are now in your wish list. And if they are now, I do apologize to you, your loved ones, and your wallet. I am sorry. But uh, yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.